everyone. Today is the last lecture about uh, calcium imaging. So let's look at this paper. So this paper, electropermeabilization of inner and outer cell membrane with microsecond pulse electrical field, quantitative study with calcium ions. So here they use without extracellular calcium media, which is consisting of normal media, alpha MEM or just media, plus EGTA. As you already know, EGTA is extracellular calcium chelator, so they can make the media without calcium. So both of them without calcium media, and then they culture the cell. While they culture the cell, they induce electrical field here at this time point, 500 seconds later. And then in this below condition, without any inhibitor treatment, they can show immediate increase of calcium and then go back. But on the upper panel, when they pre-treat it with ER calcium inhibitor, subsidic gargin, and then after adding subsidic gargin, as you already know, that subsidic gargin is inhibiting of CERCA. CERCA is cytodor 2 ER calcium influx. So when they block it, the calcium cannot be penetrate to the ER nucleus level. So sudden increase of calcium, we can easily imagine and that we also observe many times, right? And then after peak, they go down. While this peak is going down, they induce ES. But opposite to this below panel, ES cannot increase the peak of calcium whether they go down. So what does it mean? So from this analysis, how you describe this result into your further finding? So here they suggest that, so they want to know where this calcium is coming from. When they induce ES or certain Yoda one or any like anything you want to do, when you do something to the cell, sudden increase of calcium detected in calcium-free media. First, this calcium is never coming from the extracellular media, right? Because there is no calcium in the media. And then, next, where is calcium coming from? Where can be coming from? The calcium, their calcium level is cytosol calcium level, so nucleus ER is the only way they can show the calcium, right? So, so but when they, so here they block the I circa and circa, block the channel between cytosol to nucleus ER. Under this condition, there is no, this, this direction of influx of calcium, nothing there. And then once, they block this influx of ER, there is no more ER calcium in the, mid, in the cell. So meaning of the, this subsidy gargin, so they use to, they use this subsidy gargin for depleting the calcium in the ER level because there is no saving to the ER. And then this condition, upper panel, we can say that extracellular calcium, nothing. And the intracellular ER calcium, nothing. And then they induce ES, there is no increase. So we can indirectly say that this ES induced calcium can be coming from the ER. Yeah. This is their description. And then for supporting those data, they also used another like IP3R receptor and then Rodonin receptor, well known Carpian receptor using two APB, we already observed many times, and then uh, daltororen, sort, sort, sodium sort, rhodonin receptor 1, 3 in inhibitor, and then two inhibitor as well, we added this media for 30 minutes, but this inhibitor, it didn't modify this peak 
unlike the subject gradient, which means that they are due to the electropermeabilization. Sorry, Yeah, electropermeabilization of the ER membrane and not to do that and not to ER calcium channel activation. So they want to specifically know that, okay, they know the calcium is coming from the ER, but there is a two pathways. One is through ER calcium channel activation. What is the well-known ER calcium? ER calcium channel, act ER calcium channel is, as you already know, IP3R receptor, and then rhodonin receptor. Those two are very important and key channel located in ER. But still, they block it. They block. But when they block it, there is, I didn't show here, but when they block it, let's say, and then when they induce ES, they also going up. Which means that they are not using this ER calcium channel. Okay? And then how does calcium come out from the ER? through the electropermeabilization of the ER membrane. Not, they are not using the specific calcium channel here, but they are they're just, they don't know how this ES can make the certain ER membrane leakage to release the calcium. But from their finding, they can say that electropermeabilization of the ER membrane can induce the calcium release from the ER. So for your understanding, I'm going to show one more time about the Here. Okay, yeah, this is a circa. Yeah, we already know that circa is influx calcium cytosol to nucleus ER. So when they block it, actually the superficial phenomenon is block the cytosol to ER, but the final goal is to deplete the calcium level in the ER because there is no more saving. So while there treating a cell, no more ER calcium, and then when they turn on the ES, electricity, the calcium level of cytosol never go up, right? And which means that ER, is, ER calcium is mediated for inducing ES mediated calcium influx. But when they block ip 3 receptor and then caffeine receptor as well, when they block it, this kind of inhibition of inhibition is not inhibited. So they can say that if they block, let's say when they use 2APB here, and then when they block this ion channel, and when they do ES, the ES peak is not going up, and which means that, oh, they are using this channel for increasing the calcium level inside the cytosol. But under this 2APB inhibitor, the ER ES also can increase the calcium level, which means that they are not using this channel. Okay. So like that, here they use the electrical field to understand how the calcium level change, but you can modify this ES, just chemical or some your body your biomaterial or such a situation. Yes, and then the another point is that they found out uh, from the, this large cell, small cell, under the ES, cell come to be small, okay? Uh, sorry, so they found out that some cells are large, some cells are small. And then as I told you last lecture, there is a Schuban occasion, this occasion, this occasion is they utilize field strength, cell radius, and angle, and some surface tension, electrical field. And then they found out that electrical field amplitude between the two cell types should have differed by four, factor of four, while they only differ by factor of two. Which means that 
in case of small cell, yeah, they need more electrical field for electrical polymerization when you understand this equation. But some other cell, when they have already large area, they need small electrical field. So there is why, depending on the cell shape and then cell direction, ES mediated calcium activation can be different. And then for uh, backing up our memory, yes, as I told you, the frequency decoding of calcium oscillation. So there are many oscillation type. So depending on your set type or your condition, you can see many different types. But the important thing is that uh, well-known calcium mediated transcription factor is MFAT. Okay, how MFAT is activated? MFAT when calcium is coming to the cytosol, this MFAT phosphorylation come to be dephosphorylated. Yeah, and then with help of, help of calcium urine, one of the key calcium binding protein, and then now MFAT can go inside of the nucleus. Why? This MFAT already have nucleus transporting peptide sequence. So easily they can go inside. And then for certain activation, they they phosphorylate it, and then sometimes they can be inside of the inside of nucleus, which can be used as a memory of the calcium. So when you do Western blood, and then to see the MFAT phosphorylation in nucleus, which is uh, which can be marker for memory of the calcium. And then later, 25 minutes later, they go, they can go back to the outside. So so. How this calcium is deposphorylated de and fat? Here, calm modeling, when they're free, but when calcium level is going up, calcium modeling, calm modeling and calcium binding, and then while they're binding, this complex is mediated, and then M fat is binding to this side, and then they can be deposphorylated, and then they can go inside. In another feature, also similarly, they don't matter where the calcium is coming from, from certain voltage gate channel, ORI associate channel, or any kind of like beta catenin channel, they never concern about it. But once the calcium level is enhanced in inside, inside of cytosol, this camodulin, canulin, and MFAT complex is mediated, and then this MFAT is dephosphorylated and going to the nucleus, and then here they activate osteoblastic gene. Or when you use the T cell, T cell activated gene activated. Macrophage, macrophage related gene can be activated. Yeah, as I told you, MFAT have five subtypes, but only MFAT 1, 2, 3, 4, is calcium, they have calcium binding site. MFAT 5, they don't have calcium binding site. So quickly, last lecture, I just quickly skip it, but here, once again, we can say that. Here, they found out that MFAT induced histone oscillation relay switch promotes CMIC dependent growth in pancreatic cancer cell. They found out that a cancer growth through induction of the proliferative MFAT CMIC axis mechanistically serum increased intertelial calcium concentration and then activate the calcineurin MFAT pathway. We already know that. To induce CMIC transcription, MFAT, when they are localized in nucleus, and then the CMIC transcription activated. And MFAT binds to the serum response element within the proximal promoter, initiated P300 dependent histoacylation. So this MFAT transcription factor, but they are helping for another transcription factor activation, uh, and then they also binding some serum responsive element, especially in promoter side, and then they can activate histone oscillation. So not only MFAT is working not only for the cellular behavior, but also for opening the histone, histone something. But this is about the cancer cell, and then maybe you can find another your cell type. The next. Yeah. Calcium oscillation frequency decoding in cardiac cell hypertrophy 
role of calcineal and fat as a calcium signal integrate integrators. So you already easily imagine that where which kind of cell type is most influenced by the calcium? That one is your cardiac cell, cardiac muscle cell. Cardiac muscle cell they continuously beat automatically, right? And then they have they need this kind of calcium oscillation. And then calcium oscillation should be maintained a lot. So they found out that depending on the calcium oscillation frequency, frequency means that how often the calcium oscillation happens in the cell. And then they check the cell area. So they found out this correlation, which means that more calcium frequency means more often calcium, they have more large cell area. Less calcium frequency, they have less cell area. So from this a control cell or many inhibitor or activator, they found out this kind of correlation between calcium frequency and then cell area. This is coming from the cardiac cell, cardiac muscle cell, but we can also easily imagine this frequency dependent, and maybe cell area dependent calcium oscillation frequency can be observed from your cell type. So for example, in high stiffness, your new culture of the macrophage in high stiffness substrate cell can have large surface area. And then we can imagine maybe this cell can have high oscillation frequency of calcium. When, they, when, they, when you use the soft substrate for culturing the macrophage or fibroblast, and then they have small cell area, and then they might be have less low oscillation frequency. Yeah, we can imagine like that. And then as I told you, yeah, and then from this binding, yeah, you can imagine that. Uh, maybe it's not 100% match because this binding from the cardiac muscle cell, so just you can imagine the cell area and then frequency of the calcium. Neuron cell, maybe fibroblast, epithelial cell, T cell. So when you have experienced to culture those kind of cell in 2D substrate, for example, maybe fibroblast is the largest cell area they have. And then, and then next epithelial cell, and then T cell. T cell is, they are not attaching on the substrate easily. They are, most of them, they are floating cell, so round shape. And then little uh, hexagonal structure or rectangular structure and fibroblast, you already know that this fibroblast structure. So when you imagine this three cell type in 2D, or maybe you can imagine, oh, it, when the increase of frequency, there are increase of cell area. Oh, we can generally say like that. But when you see this neuron cell, neuron cell cell area is not that much higher than fibroblast in 2D substrate. But uh, maybe neuron cell is very specific. Yeah, they are specific, exciting cell. Compared to the other cell, we can say that they are non-exciting cell. But this is exciting cell. So we can generally think, consider the cell area can correlate the calcium oscillation frequency. And then this calcium oscillation, they are translated in certain transcript factor, nf kappa b MEP-K, MFAT, and gly glycogen phosphoric kinase, and carmodulin K2, and carpane. So they are already mentioned in certain literature, and then if you want to say that you want you want to you this experiment using calcium oscillation, and then you find out oh my cell is fibroblast, and then I observe some calcium oscillation change, and then might be MFAT can be changed. So you can show them as a one of the phenomena. But we didn't know that this phenomenon is really related to your desired cellular function. You don't know. In that case, maybe you are using MFAT phosphorylation inhibitor or MFAT inhibitor then to link. This MFAT is really mediated to your cellular behavior. Okay? And then let's say in case of uh, uh, epithelial cell, let's say macrophage. Macrophage is also located here. Macrophage, and then you find out, oh, my cell, my macrophage changed their calcium oscillation. And then to link this calcium oscillation to the transcription factor, NF kappa B. NF kappa B is already well known uh, uh, transcription factor for immune cell, 
But also, this is also well known for mediating the partial modulation. So you can easily imagine and to link this previously well known calcium mediated density factor, how they are related to your cellular behavior. And then I yet introduced this calcium modulation and migration. Here, this is not published in certain journal, but I got it, got it from um, doctor yeah, manuscript. So calcium modulation in wounded fibroblasts, monolayer are specially regulated through substrate mechanics. So I search certain keyword in the Google, like calcium modulation and stiffness. There, there is not much of report, but this is one of them. So here, let's see. Okay, figure A, calcium dynamics in fiber bus monorail with area density above this 500 cell per millimeter square. Typical calcium fiber bus monorail on PA gel when they have this eight kilopascal before exposure to wound edge. You culture yourself PA gel eight kilopascal, and then they are fully dense, no gap between the cell, and then there's no calcium oscillation. But figure B is typical calcium profile in fiber blast, the same gel, after exposure to wound edge. Where is the wound edge? You just scratch it, and then suddenly they start to show oscillation. And then significant more cells show calcium oscillation upon exposure wound edge following removal of the PDMS strip. So here, before wound, uh, actually before wound, there, when you do the collective cell migration study, this cell should be fully, almost fully confused, confluent. And then there is not much of change of calcium oscillation depending on the stiffness. But we can say little change here, but generally nothing much change. But dramatically, when you make the wound, like scratch this cell on the center side, like this. This is a scratch. So when you do, when you want to make the wound, there are two ways. One is, like this, you already put the PDMS board here. They are commercially available. Also in ITRA we have it. And then you see the cell with co full confluency. And then after overnight, or 24 hours, you remove the PDMS. And then you can see this kind of gap. And the cell start to migrate this side. Okay, this is one way. The other one is you just scratch it. Scratch, and then they also start to show calcium oscillation. So this is their wound. And then suddenly, 50 or 60% cell, not all, they start to show calcium oscillation. Okay, and then they check. This kind of phenomenon is depending on the cellular density. Here, they found out 500 cell, 1,000 cell. 1,000 cell, they, have, they can show more frequency of calcium oscillation, right? Okay, this is one finding. And then they check the cell density and calcium oscillation period. So less cell density have large period, which means that less frequency, right? Less often. Well, larger density, relatively uh, low oscillation period, which means that more frequent, more often. So this is the representative, but you can see cell density can impact the calcium oscillation frequency. Okay, and then even though you can select this 500 cell, this is a representative images. The real phenomenon is coming from like this. Some cell, this is a fraction. Fraction means percentage. This is 4%, 3%, 2%, 1%. Not all cell can have same calcium oscillation. They are, their direction to the wound is different. Their cell cycle is different. And their cell area is different. So there are, there are many variations. But 
we can say that this is their average, 180 seconds, yeah, maybe around here. Yeah, this is from the 500 cells. So when you see this kind of Hashim oscillation from the Hashim imaging, they are, they are not very homogeneous, very dynamic. But from their, their, from their dynamic situation, you try to get some answer, okay? So th this is a real feature of the Hashim imaging. I want to show them. Some cells have very low oscillation, I mean slow. Some cells very high frequency. But when you, let's say you had 100 cell, you plot all and then you can get this data. But when you have 1,000 cell, this is more shipped to the where? Left side, okay? When you have 1,000 cell, they are, real, they are more shipped to the left side, okay? So this comes shifting and then this uh, frequency and then the percentage also very important. So we can say that, let's imagine this is from 500 cell per millimeter square and then from this kilopascal, the real feature is you have, when you have 100 cell, 60 cell have harsh modulation, okay? From 60 cell, this is 60 cell, 60 cell, some cell have this kind of frequency, some cell this frequency. So here, they did mention in detail, this percentage is including the non-excited cell or not. But as you can imagine, 100 cell, 60 cell, from 60 cell, you can see this kind of graph. And then, they image the calcium oscillation like this. This is their und, okay? And then they found out that depending on the area and their position, how the calcium oscillation differ. This red color is 16 oscillation per hour. This black color is three oscillation per hour. More black color you can see from the, from the near the und, right? But more high frequency like green, yellow, and red relatively but not 100%, relatively, you can see from this uh, far area, right? So this kind of phenomenon, they observe, and then they quantify distance from wound edge, the number of the calcium peaks, okay? So from the low stiffness and high stiffness, interestingly, this is coming from the glass, glass from the large distance, far away from the wound, they have show calcium number, peaks, more often calcium oscillation, like this A. But when they culture the cell in low stiffness, below one kilopascal, near the edge, near the wound, they have high number of calcium. So totally different feature, right? Yeah, depending on stiffness, the calcium oscillation can be differently observed depending on the distance from the wound edge. And then, they quantify, depending on the stiffness, less than one kilopascal, eight kilopascal, 25, a glass is few megapascal, and then distance from wound edge with maximum calcium, they just, uh, they analyze this red dot, and then they show this kind of trend. And then here, and then they want to know how, why this happened. This is their fundamental question, right? And then to link this calcium modulation they find out the traction force. Traction force, interestingly, traction force, this is und, is high in near the und edge. Same as the calcium modulation. But here, this traction force in high stiffness, relatively. Actually, we can not, this is not 100%, but relatively, this high calcium traction force is located in this, this center area, far, far area, not the near area. So they just uh, approximately they want to link might be this traction force and calcium oscillation link each other from their position, okay? And then next you can imagine how they approach, how they prove this concept. Next is they decrease traction force here, right? Using blebstatin and then PMSC of uh, Y compound and then ML7, they block the traction force and then they check the calcium modulation. 
and then they can prove it. When the traction force is really mediating the calcium oscillation, under the traction force inhibitor, calcium oscillation, special location, change, right? So you can easily link how this traction force can mediate the calcium oscillation. Yeah. And then they, they, in, they, they also did this one. So inhibition of myosin 2 activity reduced wound induced calcium oscillation. They already proved it. Yeah. Inhibition of myosin 2 activity reduced wound induced calcium oscillation. So reduction of contractility by blevastatin affect a range of mechanobiological system that allow sensing of extracellular environment such as cadrin-based cell cell adhesion and integrin-based adhesion to the extracellular substrate. This is their, uh, their discussion part. So, and then they link, they can link. Traction force can mediate the oscillation. And then what does it mean? So this is their only their finding. Traction force mediated calcium oscillation. But is there any link between traction force and calcium oscillation? So they just de describe like that. When they, they, when they have tra high traction force, this is uh, the high traction force already well known coming from the high cell cell interaction. Mm. Because when they culture the cell in high stiffness, relatively compared to soft, soft substrate, cell in cell cell interaction is high, high. This high cell cell interaction somehow they can increase the traction force near this area. And then cell cell interaction, when they have, they can give them back the calcium more easily. The calcium is not only coming from the cell media. They can be coming from the cell cell interaction. So they described like that, but they didn't uh, reveal the real picture using certain inhib certain inhibitor study, but they just described like that in this manuscript. And the next one is, and many people are working on the macrophage, so I searched in Google, macrophage calcium modulation. Not many report, just few, and I introduced a few of them. So recently published in Cell Report, intracellular calcium signaling induced by ATP potentiate 8 macrophage phagocytosis. So their major feature is that macrophage here, they are activated. And then when they activate it, they release ATP. When they release ATP, the calcium through the cell membrane channel, calcium can go inside. When the calcium can go inside, they, this ATP induced calcium influx in cytosol is helping for enhancing efficient phagocytosis. What is the number role of the macrophage? The number role Number one role is clearing of the non-self, non-self bacteria, non-self molecule, or which is called phagocytosis. Eating something. This is their first law. Okay? But but here, when they use APRAGE, APRAGE is ATP degrading enzyme, and then there's no ATP in the media from the trigger macrophage, and then no calcium inside in the cell, and then no calcium, they are reducing the phagocytosis. So you can imagine, when macrophage is recruited in certain injured site, first macrophage, they, they find something, and then they start to show, they start to secrete their signal to the neighboring cell. Oh, I found something. They cannot shout. Their major pathway is to release some cytokine, and then one of them is ATP. So ATP released from certain cells, certain macrophages, can be helping for other macrophages, phagocytosis. So how do they prove it? Here, they added calcium dye, fluorophore, and then they target this cell. And this cell, they already have uh, IP3 cargo. 
This IP address cargo only lives under local UV treatment around 400 nanometers. So this kind of thing also we can do in our fifth floor comfocal machine. So we learn soon from the operator. I ask them. So when we, so they, they dye the cell floor four calcium imaging, and then another IP3 cargo already commercial available, and then they treat this single cell using local image, a local laser, and then you can see when they induce local UV here, other cell. 10 seconds later, they are all activated. Oh, it's very interesting. Even though I target this cell, but other cells are activated. But when they use AP rate, ATP hydrolyzed enzyme, target it, but not much of calcium is activated, right? So they quantified. F0 is base level, delta F is how much they are going up. Control, when they uncaging the IP3, so as you know, IP3 is, what is that? IP3 is uh, ER, IP3 receptor activator, right? This IP3 originally can be released from cell membrane through the enzyme reaction. And then this IP3 is binding to the ER, IP3 receptor. And then this ER, IP3 receptor, they can release calcium from the nucleus ER to cytosol. Okay. This is, so this is, we can easily say that turn on the calcium through the ER. But suddenly other cells are activated, the calcium. Oh, it's very interesting. And then this there, this is this well-known general phenomenon. They check low cell and then BMDN. Responding cell, not 100%. Why maybe uh, they, are, they are just uh, fixed certain area and then find out how much, how many of the number of cells are responding, 20%. But when they decrease ATP, significant decrease in low cell and BMDN. Okay, this is general phenomenon. And then they check in 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 vivo study. In vivo, they also induce local UV here. Uh, this is some macrophage dye. And then they already induce the calcium dye as well. When they target this here for activating IP3 for turning on the calcium, you can see other part also calcium level is activated. But here, AP rate, ATP degrading enzyme treated, only this cell activated, right? Oh, this is also in vivo, in vivo proved. Control, all are activated, but AP rate treated, Unactivated. Okay. And then this uh, macrophage number also significant decrease in here. Okay. Oh, and then this is true. Whether in vitro in vivo, ATP dependent calcium activation from the neighboring cell they found on macrophage. And how they do this calcium imaging? Okay. So muni macrophage plated on the cover slip and loaded cell membrane uh, permeable ester caged IP3 PM. This is angel life science. I already ordered. And then they added calcium indicator fluor 4. And then Peroni F127 already know that they increase solubility of fluor 4. And then Surfi Pajon, uh, I, I, I didn't know why they do this, in unsupplemented culture media, unsupplemented minted dead without FBS for 30 minutes at 37 degrees. And then they start live calcium imaging using HBS buffer with calcium. So you always have to mention calcium with a calcium. Using Confocal, the timeless for one minute, 0.6 frame per second, okay? So which means that around two seconds, one frame, right? The water immersion, water immersion, why they use water immersion? because they are culturing the cell in the media. So water immersion objective, right? They didn't use the oil immersion objective to match it, the reflection index, right? And then fluor AM excited in green laser, and then ROI were drawn in certain field. When they, when they turn the UV laser, 
100%. This normal laser around 0.5% or 10% maximum, they use 100% and then one millisecond pulse to release active IP3 within the ROI. And then they use imager software and then to check the cache imaging. And then they want to know, okay, this calcium is coming from uh, extracellular media or through, through from the from the nucleus ER. They do again, normal media activated, other cell are activated, and no calcium, no activation. Oh, interesting. So they found out that they originally expect that this calcium from the neighboring cell increase can be from the inside of the nucleus ER, but they're not true. This neighboring calcium increase also induced by the extracellular media, calcium level. So EGTA, they use EGTA for calcium chelating the media. So this control means HBSS with two millimole calcium, below calcium free media is HBSS supplemented with two millimole EGTA. But they found out that extra calcium is important for inducing calcium level. Okay. And then, the another question is they want to know well, this kind of calcium increase to the neighboring cell by ATP is similar to M1 and M2 polarization. They found out that uh, M0, they, some, they did similar behavior, but M1 is more activated. M1, more number of cells are activated. M2 is less. So M2 is the, this target cell. Other cell, some cell are respond, some cell are not respond. So they can find, they found out that M1 is more responding. So we can say that M1 is more, when you imagine M1 cell is more reacting cell to the inflammation. So they are easily and sensitively react the ATP. And then they start to bagos start to do phagocytosis. And then, okay, what's the meaning of this calcium oscillation or calcium influx to the macrophage? From this figure, they only show just calcium enhanced in other cell. What's the meaning of that? They found out that when, when they increase the calcium from the macrophage cell, which, which is very well known, Phagocytosis is enhanced. So they check the control. This is an E. coli, uh, e. coli phagocytosis bead, and then this gymosan bead, SR bead. So they use this E. coli, they, and then they destroy the E. coli, and then they get a certain bacteria component, and they put in the bead. This is already commercially available one. And then, you found out that over time, the phagocytosis is enhanced, which means phagocytosis index means this, this is already have red color. So when you culture, when you treat this bead in the media, 30 minutes later, you can find out that when macrophage is phagocyto phagocytosis of this E. coli bead, they turn on the green and turn on the red signal from the macrophage. This is a percentage of the green signal. 50% is enhanced. But when they treat EGTA, extracellular calcium chelator, low calcium level, and then decrease. And then cyto D, cyto D actin polymerase inhibitor, when they engulf the non self bacteria, they need actin. So this is their passive control to prove this is working well, this study. And then this calcium dependent phagocytosis increase is all confirmed by other cell type, uh, other bacteria, gymosine and SRUs. And then they want to know this phenomenon is coming from the BAPTA. BAPTA is also another, another chelator of calcium in the media. When they treat it, also they are decreasing. So from this study, Actually, this is the end of this figure. The from this study, they found out that this calcium from the one cell, how they affect the other other cell, other macrophage calcium increase. 
ATP is the first the release, like that. And then from the extracellular calcium media, they are going inside and then helping for efficient bauxitosis. The next paper, they are using uh, they are another calcium and the macrophage study. They are using zebrafish. This is all in vivo study. So they are using 4.3 a.m. 4.3 a.m. is a previous version of 4.4 a.m. Similar. So when they uncut, no damage. Cutting, damage. Cutting is edge of the this little zebra fish. They cut the edge. And then when they cut, calcium is enhanced in the wound area, right? And then they treat this subsigargin. Subsigargin is circa inhibitor. They deplete the ER. Calcium, okay? And then here, they found out that the normal condition, this calcium, five minute, uh, this is minute, five, 6.2, 6 6.6, 6 8, 9, 9.5. Uh, sorry, this is 5 to 9.5, total 1.5 minute. And then they found out that calcium is somehow oscillated, right? So when they treat the subsequent what happened? The ER, the calcium is depleted, and then there's no calcium. So they can say that ER induced calcium oscillation is their homeostasis. From the GCAM 6S. GCAM 6S is a plasmid to transfect the zebra fish or cell. And then when they attach the calcium, they increase the green signal. But, okay, this is their like general feature without just in the intact, intact zebra fish. Calcium is mediated from ER. And then from the normal intact condition, total number of macrophage, lava, no change in the edge. So they try to approach why this calcium oscillation, calcium increase is coming from. So on normal, no macrophage change. But here, they cut, they found out that this red color is macrophage marker, TNF alpha, M1 marker. Macrophage is also recruited. This is uh, hours, you can see one hour later cut, six hour later cut. And then over time, this macrophage as well as TNF alpha, M1 macrophage was recruited in the edge. This is a natural phenomenon. When, when they experience injury, macrophage should go there to make some defense, right? So they found out uncut, not much of macrophage, and then no TNF alpha. But when, while they're cutting, little red color is located in this edge, and then not even red color, green color, M1, TNF alpha macrophage also recruited here. So they, so they, they try to say that maybe this macrophage is, lo is localized, concentrated here, this can be the major source of the calcium increase. So, they also use subsigargin, circa inhibitor, and then do the same similar things. So here, they found out that subsigargin treated, when they cut, uh, here, more macrophage, TNF alpha located, but subsigargin treated, no ER calcium, no calcium oscillation, so not much of macrophage is localized. So all is marker is going down, except percentage. Percentage means that from the total macrophage, how much of the cell, how many of the cell are TNF alpha positive. Cell, the positive percentage is similar, but total number of macrophage and then TNF alpha positive cell are all decreasing. We can say that, oh, maybe ER calcium is very important to recruit the macrophage in the edge wound area. And then they check another cell type, interleukin 1 beta plus macrophage. Also, similarly, they are relatively decreased. They're more localized in the wound edge, but less localized here. 
here, the quantification. Then they make summary like this. When they do fin amputation, fin amputation is cut the edge fin. And then calcium enhance. Calcium enhance, they recruit macrophage recruitment. At the rest, macrophage activation to M1, tnf alpha, alpha interleukin beta also enhance. Those are inhibiting digestive substrate This is an inhibitor of ER calcium. So they want to say that calcium level is very important for recruiting the macrophage. Yeah. This is the second paper. And our last paper is about the calcium and then macrophage cell, immune cell. Here, they want to link the frequency of calcium modulation lead to the MFAT activation in human immature dendrit dendritic cell. So first, Immature dendritic cell. Dendritic cell, they primary culture from the blood. And then in the centrifuge, they collect the dendritic cell. Dendritic cell is, you can see, this, this is similar to the macrophage, but they are already located in the tissue or human blood. So you can just imagine this dendritic cell is similar to the macrophage. And then they have this calcium modulation. But when they culture the dendritic cell using LPS, right after LP treated, calcium modulation amplitude is going down, right? But when they culture this dendritic cell under LPS overnight, calcium modulation almost disappear, right? This is called mature dendritic cell. And then they, how this immature dendritic cell calcium modulation coming from? When they treat IP3 receptor inhibitor to APB, for example, they are gone. And then we can say that, oh, this is coming from IP3 receptor, right? Specific receptor. And then they also treat subsequent They deplete the calcium ER. And then also gone. Oh, maybe this calcium oscillation is coming from IP3 receptor, address, unknown, subtle receptor. But anyhow, this calcium is coming from the ER. Right, calcium modulation. And then they treat this uh, phosphorylipase C inhibitor. Phosphorylipase C is they degrade the cell membrane lipid, and then they make IP IP3. As you know, IP3 is also is IP3 is binding to the IP3 receptor in the ER, and then they start to secrete calcium from the ER. So this oscillation is gone. So this. A, B, D, E, F is try to know oh, how this calcium modulation happened. ER related it and then IP3 receptor mediated. Also IP3 mediated. Yeah, they just narrow down their study. And then they also find out other kind of inhibitor is how they affect the calcium modulation of the dendritic cell. They found out that in uh, this immortalized dendritic cell, and then originally, uh, high per forty percent of cell are have this kind of A four and A peaks. When they treat latinium, latinium is extracellular calcium blocker. They block certain stretch mediated or SOC channel. Then they block the extracellular calcium influx. When they block it. This high number of oscillation disappear. EGTA extracellular calcium oscillator disappear. 2 APB IP3 receptor inhibitor all gone very powerfully. So and Geno C just uh, so C is about sorry yeah you can check the literature and now they found that. Not only intracellular calcium level, but also external calcium also involved for maintaining the calcium oscillation. So calcium oscillation is always should be balanced between extracellular media calcium to the inside, as well as ER to the cytosol. Okay, those are always always they show like that. And then when they treat LPS overnight or TR7 agonist overnight, they can culture they can consider as mature than their cell they relatively gone this kind of oscillation. So this is their left to the right. 
when they treat maturation, cash maturation is gone. Then their next question is, when they when they treat the cash maturation depletion, and then this denial cell that can be matured automatically. Once again, this LPS or TNR cell agonist is an agonist for maturing the denial cell to the inflammation stage. While they are suffering the inflammation stage, calcium oscillation is gone. Next question, this is a first maturation, next calcium oscillation is gone. But they want to ask again, when calcium oscillation is gone, also dendritic cell can be matured? Okay, this is their question. So for doing that, yeah, they are they're doing experiment. And then before this experiment, they checked MPAT-C1 in cytoplasmic fraction. So MPAT-C1, MPAT, MPAT-C1 is MPAT-2. Yeah, MPAT-2, when they cytoplasmic fraction, they, let's say, uh, while they are CSA, CSA is, where is CSA is, Nu reduce nucleotide location of MFAT by binding the calcium dependent phosphatase calcium urine. So they inhibit the nuclear translocalized MFAT. So MFAT C is highly localized in cytoplasm level. Okay, so this is passive control, right? But when this immortalized dendritic cell, they are matured, also MFAT is cytotol localized. And then 2APB, this calcium oscillation inhibitor, right? When you treat it, also compared to the normal immature dendritic cell, they are localized. They are C one is more localized inside the plasmic. So they want to link calcium oscillation can affect this C one localization localization in cytoplasmic area. And then this is their quantification. So this is the immature dendritic cell, immature dendritic cell, and then this is their passive control. When they inhibit the oscillation, also MFAT, this is one of the key test factor to modulate the dendritic cell, they are changed. So they a little bit, little bit shift. They really want to say that oscillation change can affect the dendritic cell phenotype. They want to say like that. And then they, this is their rest of blood and their image. Emotion in our cell, more MFAT is localized. So we can say the MFAT, the calcium oscillation, is also mediated MFAT in translocalized in nucleus. They are key for maintaining the emotion stage. But when they are matured, this is DAPI, this is the MFAT, C1, not localized that much. This is the passive control. So here, they use methanol acetone one to one ratio at minus 20 degree, 20 minutes for fixation. So for your, for your information, I refer this one. They are not using PFA. They are using methanol acetone one to one, minus 20 degree, 20 minutes. And then, okay, emphasis on, we, are, we already know that emphasis on is calcium oscillated mediated transcription factor. But is there any transcription factor related? So they check N NF kappa B. NF kappa B, immature stage, no localization, right? But mature stage, yes, their localization is true because they are LPA treated, they are more M1. But when they treat 2APB, calcium oscillation inhibitor, they expect, when they NFB is, is related to the calcium oscillation mediated something, NF, NF kappa B should be localized in nucleus but they don't show like that. And we can say that MPAS-C1 mediated calcium oscillation, they can detect. And then this calcium oscillation is linked to the oscillation depletion mediated maturation. Okay. And then they finally, they want to say that Inhibition of calcium oscillation makes maturation of dendritic cell or not. So hold this marker is the maturation dendritic cell marker. 
So dendritic cell, immature stage, and the LP3 is mature stage, and then they check the gene expression level. Gene? Yeah, gene expression level by PCR. They found out that Z2C, 2APB, 3M001, or 3R calcium oscillation inhibitor, previously known, perform, and then relatively, not 100%, but relatively, when calcium oscillation is gone, also dendritic cell can be mature stage, right? And then as a phenotype, immature dendritic cell, they have more phagocytosis. Once they are matured on the LPS, they have less phagocytosis capacity. But this capacity shift also coming from when oscillation disappear. Okay? So continuously they want to say that this oscillation, calcium oscillation, is close, close related to the your final cell phenotype. So this is their last finding. So as I told you last lecture, this is our homework as instead of as instead of exam, planning detail for cash imaging study after summary of this paper. So I suggest one page of the summary of paper and one page of your uh, calcium study based on your current work. And then I just suggest this uh, platform. First, uh, how you, which kind of dye you are using? Plasmid or dye? Okay, I just sum up this one. We have five, one, two, three, four, five, six plasmid we have. In, you can see our Meccano Google sheet. Cyt this dye is calcium cytosol ultra sensitive. You already saw, know that Gchem 6S. This is a nucleus calcium dye. Also, you can image the nucleus calcium level, not only ER, cytosol. This cytosol, nucleus calcium, this is the ER targeting calcium biosensor and one channel. This is the ER calcium targeting calcium channel, but flat. Flat, we need two excitation. And then, calcium signal in nucleus two. So, if you want to check the cytosol level of calcium by plasma, you should choose this one. And then you can see this S gene. And this S means that slow but high affinity. And then if you see this NCBI, NCBI journal, they are using another GCAM, M, intermediate, F, fast. But many people use this slow but high affinity for the fibroblast or epithelial cell. But if you want to check the, check the neuron cell, they need more high frequency, and then you have to buy the fast one of GCAM 6, fast. And then another one we have, 404 and CAR520. Both of them are green excitation. And then you should check the excitation and emission level. So first we have to choose plasmid or dye. As I told you, plasmid, you can track the calcium, calcium activation over time, today, tomorrow, four hours, eight hours later, but calcium dye, only you can check the one time point. Okay, one time point. But the plasmid, the drawback is their transmission efficiency low, like 20 or 30%. But this dye, almost 100% are positive. Okay. And they choose the media. Media for checking your calcium. HBSS with or without calcium, where you can make homemade calcium media or calcium free media. When you refer to the previous Hedgenkin paper, you can find that. And then option inhibitor, 2APB, IPC <coughs> receptor inhibitor, TG, you know, subsigargin, ER depletion, and the Latinu, the SOC inhibitor, EGTA, calcium chelator, and any mechanical inhibitor. And then how long time you pre-treat it? 0.5 hour, one hour. And then you can also imagine the sRNA if you have some target. And then what's your condition? Which platform you are using? Dish, Compocal dish, different, different PAHL, 2D, 3D, and then you want to do ES, or you want to do live chamber, or any, any kind of thing. I suggest maybe you try to optimize 24 well first. And then Compocal dish for high resolution, and normal dish, 
when you when you do some try and error in the first time I for optimization I prefer to use normal dish and then if you see something you, you check you transfer to the compact dish compact dish is expensive than normal dish and then measuring condition you want to add only media or you want to add FPBS 1% 10% where you want to add ATP and then how you want to remove the ATP or how frequently you are using pulse for each total duration major measurement for example a frequency mean how often per frame one second or per frame one second ten frame one second one frame and then pulse for each 50 to 200 millisecond which means that when you capture the one time you expose 50 millisecond how long total duration 1 minute 20 minute and then basic measurement you already showed them most of them they are checking like basal level like one or two minute and then they do something okay so this kind of thing should be described in your pages for describing your calcium oscillation study okay okay so this is the last lecture about the calcium oscillation okay ah, and then people will ask what is the difference between four four and calcium five to zero this is their answer from the touch pt both of them are commonly used calcium dye here are some difference and similarity calcium binding affinity four four high compared to calcium car five to zero means that car four four is more sensitive making a good choice for detecting small change however this also means that four four is more susceptible to calcium buffering and potential saturation so which means that they are sensitive but they are high, they are, can be highly saturated easily the dynamic range mostly calcium p5 to 0 wider wider means that when when you want to see calcium change very 0 to 100 calcium 100 car, car 5 to 0 is a proper choice but for four they have small range ultimately for high sensitivity yeah so car 5 to 0 is best best choice for action potential firing from the neuron cell and then photostability car is more photostable compared to four four yeah we can imagine longer imaging time four four is more accurate i uh, sorry uh, yeah, car 5 is more longer imaging time, proper proper dye. Toxicity, both of them are fine, not toxicity that much. Already proved. So based on that, you can choose car 5 to 0 and 404. But from the price, 404 is less pricey. Car 5 to 0 is more pricey, a little bit. So anyhow, this is a, this is their finding from the literature survey. So I hope this study this class can be helpful for your original study. Okay, thank you.